I appreciate that. Y'all been telling me and I've been just sitting here talking and my honey yells out, they can't hear you. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I miss y'all. Hi. How is everybody? That's pretty much all I was saying at the beginning anyway. That I missed y'all. I was here booed up last week and didn't get to see y'all. So, hey. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sorry about that. I'm glad you can hear me now. Yeah, because when it's doing the thing, it's muted. So, what's up, everybody? I am Eve with the baby's booty. I just got finished with class. My tummy is all kind of upset. So, y'all have to forgive me. It's just one of them crazy days today. Um, and was fighting a migraine earlier as of right now. It's gone, but my migraines like to play peekaboo, so we're gonna ride this horse as long as we can. Um, we are going to discuss tonight whatever topic it is y'all want to talk about. All right, reason being is because, from what I understand, this bell is gonna be on fire tonight, so we are going to let y'all have the show. All right. I've seen tons of babies in the Facebook group. I've seen tons of crafts that you guys have been working on and everything looks so fabulous. So we're going to let you guys drive the train this evening and let us know what questions you may have. All right. Now with the baby's booty hoop group, we are primarily embroidery. We also do vinyl. We also do rhinestones. We also do um, sublimation. So you can ask questions on any of those subjects. That's not an issue. Also, we're talking about the Hoop Group. So if you would like to join and be a part of the Hoop Group, you can join on Facebook and be a Hoop Group person there. You can also join on our website, babiesbooty.com. And I actually need to, now that I'm looking at it, take off our um, message because all of the So What Pro classes are done. They are gone, you guys. We had a blast in our classes so I am super excited to let you guys know it was just amazing. We had a really good time and I'm looking forward to the next class already. All right. So super excited about that. There we go. Boom. We're going to take that away because that doesn't apply anymore. And um, we're going to uh, also let you know that if you're interested in receiving a bell, now this bell is what we bring. When folks receive new babies, all right, so when you make an upgrade to your business and you get a new piece of equipment, we ring the bell to celebrate with you, all right? This bell is totally awesome. And if you become a member here on you joined and joined a membership, and you'll get a bell for free. So if you're interested in a bell and you joined as a member here on YouTube, just holler at me and we'll get you a bell. All right, so I have done all this talking. And I went through all of this stuff, so now it's on y'all. So let's go ahead and say hello to the folks that have joined us here on YouTube during all this time. I've been running my mouth, and y'all couldn't hear me. Miss Latasha Jackson was first, and I like to say hey to y'all because without you guys, I wouldn't have this channel, okay? So you're most important, and so we're going to speak up and say hi. So Miss Sheila Cushenberry is in the house. Hi, Sheila Cushenberry. <laughs> Welcome, Ms. Tanyu. Thank you. You and Latasha, thank you to the both of you for being YouTube Who Group members. Borakua. Uh oh, uh oh. So I'm getting word from the um from the master back there that something is going on in the background. Let me know if you guys can catch up with me. Because what I'm looking at. It doesn't show that it's acting up. So let me know what's going on. It's saying the stream is good. It just told me. Okay, there we go. There we go. Hopefully y'all are back. Is everybody back? Because it was acting up, he says. All right. So let's say hey to, um, again, Miss Latasha Jackson Tanyu. Thank you for being YouTube Hoop Group members here on YouTube. Sheila Cushionberry. Hi, Sheila Cushionberry. <laughs> Boracua Sewing and Crafts, hello, how are you, Afro-Columbian? Eh, for the most part, yes, and that's where I'm going to stick with that. Robin Clark, hello, Robin Bryant, hello, how are you, welcome. Stampin' Sue Creates from PA, welcome, my dear, thank you for joining us this evening. Scooby-Doo, she says she's not feeling good either, so she's going to just listen, no worries, I understand. 
I don't feel my best either. So welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube group, group member. Um, R. Chival, too. Good evening. Enjoyed the class tonight. Well, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you for joining me. Um, it was totally awesome. I always enjoy the classes and you guys make it totally worth it. Um, Princess Tutu's Boutique. Hello. How are you? Glenda Wallace. Hello. How are you? Heather. Hello from Queensland, Australia. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Karen Murray. Hello again. Yes, for sure. Isabel. Hello. How are you? PJ Coppitz. Hey, PJ. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Miss Bickham. Hi, Mo. Welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. So crafty, welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Sharice Mims, welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member, and yes, I missed you as well. I missed everybody. Miss143, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Shirley Stewart, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member um, as well. And let's see, let's see. Marsha Jones, hello, how are you? It looks like y'all dropped off again. Oh, no, we're not going to go through this tonight. Marsha Jones, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um. All right, now, getting back to where we have sound. <laughs> oh, no, Miss Bickham, you weren't feeling well either. Hopefully, you are back. Um, let's see. Hopefully. Okay. So is everybody here? Cause it's, yeah, there we go. I don't know why this thing is acting crazy. Shirley Stewart told me, she said, I thought something was wrong with my computer. <laughs> no, it was me not turning the mic on. Yeah, Shirley um, Miss Regina. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for letting me know who you are. Uh, Pearl Lucas says, we missed you and hope you had a beautiful anniversary with your boo. <laughs> We did. We did. Sampus who creates say get the bells ringing. We get ready to do that. Miss Eartha Lewis. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Red Roses says she's looking forward to part two of the So What Pro class. Awesome. Yeah, we got to get those rolling out. Uh, ASAP. Dorothy Gaston says hello from STL. Welcome. And hey, Chaz and Chloe. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for watching with Grandma. Make sure y'all behave for her. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Teresa Spencer, hello. How are you? How are you? Let's see. Miss Stampin' Sue Creates says she got her new baby brother Essence VE2300 and she named him Bob. Well, Bob, welcome to the Hoop Group family. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. <laughs> So for what I understand, this bell is going to be ringing, so I'm looking forward to it. So be sure to let me know if you got a new baby so we can ring the bell. Patrina, hello from Alabama. Welcome. Marianne Reddick, welcome. Congratulations, Stampin' Sue Creates. That's awesome sauce. <laughs> um, can you make a wooden earring out of the pre-cut circle with the Cricut Maker? Can you make a wooden earring? out of the pre-cut circle with the Cricut Maker. From what I understand with the Cricut Maker, um, there is a certain wood that you can use to cut on the Cricut. I forget the name of it because I don't have the Cricut Maker, but I want to say it's, it starts with a B. Um, it's not birch, but it's, I guess, like a little thin wood that you can use. And then I know the Cricut Maker has the um, rolly wheel. Uh, to help with the heavier type materials. So if you do have the rolly wheel and the right type of wood, then you can make some of anything on that Cricut. But with certain materials, I would read the recommended materials for that machine first. So as far as whether you can make a wooden earring or not, I'm not going to say yes or no, but you would want to definitely check the... Uh, advised materials for that thing to make sure you don't tear up something okay that Cricut Maker is a really good machine um see and I know my Silhouette 4 it comes with the rolly wheel too and there's some stuff on that that I can do but I haven't brought it out to really use it much I think I've used my Silhouette maybe maybe three times 
and I've had it almost a year now. And it's not because I don't want to or am afraid, but I've just been so busy doing so many other things that I have yet to pull it out and know what I what all I really can and can't do with it. So unfortunately, as far as letting you know what you can do with it, I'm not that good with, it, with giving that type of information. Uh, Nancy Fouts from Iowa. Hello. How are you? Callie Trish B. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, Miss Social Dan says, hi, Eve and everyone. Did I miss when the next So What Pro class is? Yes, we've done all of the So What Pro classes. Um, the beginner classes, we've done all of them. The last one was tonight, just before going live. So um, we will have another beginner because it was, I didn't realize how many folks was really going to um, be interested in it. So we'll definitely have one more beginner beginner's class around about the same time we kick off the level two class, okay? So that for those who did, missed out and would like to try and get in, there'll be one more class, but then we'll have the level two classes, all right? Um, hey, Andrea Ross, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group captain, actually. Thank you for being a member. Um, Stampin' to Create says, all is good. Now she got your bell right <laughs> I'm not even mad at that because you you was waiting on that baby. You got that baby home and then people was like, we're going to get her in this new machine. I'm not even mad. That's what's up. Norma Lazaro. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Teresa Spencer is here. Welcome. Simone Warren. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Kathy Ann. Hey, Kathy Ann. Miss Ethel Smith. Hey, Ethel Smith. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, Felicia Storm say she's back. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, Robin Clark, how are you? Hey, Debbie D. Hey, Debbie D. Welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Miss D. Purple One, River City Creative. Hello, how are you? Town T Town T-shirts. Hey, just working on a stocking winter hat. It is about time for more projects, and that's the one thing I like about the fall and winter season. There are so many projects that you can use or take advantage of to get, you know, kind of cozy and lots of cool designs and things that you can do as gifts to give, um, as well as to decorate the home and decorate yourself even as you're out and about. So it's totally awesome. I love this time of year for that. You have more canvas space <laughs> on your clothing, but I'm, um, as far as the cold weather, not a fan. <laughs> um, PJ says, I need suggestions on embroidery embroidery on a bridal robe font. I've never done one before. What type of font should I use? Choose. Well, if it's bridal, usually something elegant and a lot of script. Um, so if you were to choose something, because usually the bridal robes are satin and fairly thin, number one, um, I would definitely say check out um, Stitchtopia, which there is a link in the description below. If you've never purchased a font from Stitchtopia before, I have a link that will give you, I believe it's 10% off your first order. Um, and you can use my code to get that. And she has absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous embroidery fonts. I absolutely love her fonts. So check out, um, check out Stitchtopia and find a thin lightweight font all right because it's satin so you want to get something kind of thin that will translate well on that satin and not do a bunch of puckering the bigger bulkier and chunkier the uh, stitch is when you're stitching out your font the more chances it'll pucker okay so get you a thin Beautiful script font from off of Stitchtopia, and that should translate really well on the back of that bridal robe, okay? Simone Warren, hello, River City Creative. Hello, Tanya says the class was fantabulous. Thank you. I appreciate that. I like the feedback, like the feedback. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Beverly Dudley says, hello, I bought a used baby lock EMP6 and I'm getting an error. Check top tension and bobbin. Try everything and still can't get it right. Can you help please? Miss Beverly, the one bad thing about trying to troubleshoot 
online is troubleshooting online. What I suggest um, usually involves a process of elimination. If you just got it, um, well, actually, first and foremost, if you just got it, where did you get it from? If you purchased from a person, then let's follow through some more steps. If you purchased it from a location, like a store, and purchased the used, then you take it back to them and say, hey, this isn't stitching correctly, and let them fix their problem. Because usually they'll warranty it for a couple of you know weeks or so, um, or at least once you got it home, they should walk you through whatever is wrong with it. But if you got it from a person, then we'll do a process of elimination, such as change the needle first, after you change your needle and it still doesn't stitch properly, then let's move to uh, changing out the thread that's at the top and make sure that you follow each and every diagram on the machine to be sure that it's threaded properly. You have to follow each and every single picture that's on that machine if it's on there. If not, look up the manual and follow that as well uh, so that every single step is threaded properly. If it's not threaded properly, it will give that error. Once you've re-threaded the top and put the thread through the brand new needle, make sure your presser foot is up when you're threading the top as well. I forgot to mention that. Make sure your presser foot is up and re-thread the machine at the top and then try it again. If it still doesn't stitch, then now let's look at what's in the bobbin. Take your bobbin out of the machine or if it's in the front load or in the top, take that bobbin out, find a new bobbin. So if you have to wind a new bobbin or something, but get you a new bobbin and put it in. Before you put that bobbin in, look and make sure there's no lint, there's no string that you can see that's hanging out somewhere or, you know, you don't see any dust accumulated down in there. If you do get you a little brush or something or a vacuum and suck all that stuff, that gunk out of there as much as you can. All right. Then put your bobbin in and try again. Make sure that you're loading your bobbin in properly because bobbins have two sides so it can go in either way but one way is not the right way so look at your manual or the machine to see how that thread is coming off of that bobbin and that's how you want to load it into your machine then try to stitch again all right so if all of those things you've done and you're still having issues then we'll have to go in a little bit deeper and try and figure out what's going on so but first and foremost, try your needle, re-thread your top thread with your presser foot up, replace your bobbin, see if you can't get better results, all right? So always try something different. So the top thread, whatever top thread you were using and getting an error, don't use that again. Get a completely different spool of thread, preferably a new spool, put it on, press your foot up, re-thread it, and try again. You see what I'm saying? Try a new needle. Don't use an old needle. Get a brand new one out the pack, put it in, try again. Your bobbin, don't use the old one that was in there. Pull that out and do a new one. Try it again. Um, so once you've done all those beginning processes, that's when we need to investigate what else is going on with the machine and go from there. So unfortunately, that's kind of difficult to um, process of elimination online through like chat and stuff like this, but that's your first steps, okay? Uh, Suzanne R says, howdy from uh, Aggie land. Glad you're back. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. I missed y'all. I really missed y'all. I really did. <laughs> Ebony Clay, hello. How are you? Gail Whitaker says, hello. I'm ready to sign up for a cricket class. <laughs> well, we'll see about having a cricket class as well. That's going to be a minute, but we'll see about doing a cricket class because I do love my cricket. Cricket is awesome. Felice Newsome, hello, hello, hello to you as well. Thank you for joining us. Pamela Ward, she is a YouTube Who Group member. Thank you so very much. And want to say congratulations to you because you say you got a new cricket maker. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome. That's what's up. All right. So I also see you guys were chipping in. Thank you. I do the wood started with a B, didn't I? I got that part right. <laughs> so the balls of wood. Or chip wood, chipboard is what you can cut with the uh, Cricut Maker, all right? So you can cut that wood, but I think you have to have the rolly wheel in order to cut it. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think that's the way that works. Um, but I know you can't just cut anything with it. 
Um, oh, Balta Wood is a deep cut blade, Marsha Jones says, so you can use a deep cut blade. So that's what's up. Lily says, I have Cricut and Silhouette. I like Silhouette better, she says. Well, I have to get into using the Silhouette a little bit better before I can make a final determination. But because I know my Cricut, that's why, of course, I'm favoring that a little bit. Uh, Elaine Dickerson just got a Cricut maker as well. So congratulations again to, uh, congratulations as well to you, Miss Elaine. Holla! <laughs> congratulations on your Cricut maker. Y'all got these Cricut babies coming in. That's what's up. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't seen anybody say anything about the joy yet. Let me know. Hello, Colette Martin. How are you? Robin says, I was so upset at the learning curve going from Cricut Expressions to the Cameo 4 Plus. It's a lot of learning curve with that Cameo 4. It really is. And I think that's what kind of got to me a little bit. And why I was like, you know what? I just don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time. I need to make time, but I don't have time. Uh, Stampin' to Create says, she's working on embroidered napkins for your daughter's wedding. 10 down, many more to go, ma'am. We're going to say some prayers. <laughs> Because that wet and stuff can be a lot. But congratulations on the wedding. That's what's up. <laughs> Marsha Jones, I have the Cricut Maker and love it. The Brother DX225 and love them. The Brother DX225, is that the uh, scanning cut? I think it is. Um, the scanning cut is nice. Ray Fallow, hello from Mo Mobile, Alabama. Welcome. Red Elephant Embroidery. Hello, still wasn't able to get it. Did you email them? Um, because you would need to email them. The code has been sent and they'll have to walk you through those steps because, you know, very seldom do we get a problem with the registration. Um, it's maybe, maybe once in every 500 and maybe two. So he would be the, the expert. The programmer is the one that would have to work you through getting your program up and going. Uh, Natasha Puffer from Seattle. Welcome. Hope. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Laverne Miller says she loves her Cricut Explore Air. I love my Cricut Air too as well. It's just <sighs> sometimes <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship I have to do. PJ Coppage, I still need to take my level one class because I'm home and able to get to my studio now. Okay, cool. Just let me know and we'll definitely get around to doing that. Do you have a video on those hats? What hats? Uh, T-Town t-shirts. I do have a one or two hat videos. So there are some hat videos available, but let me know which ones you're talking about. Kathleen Thompson, hello, how are you? Stampin' Sue Create says, when I took a, took my Innovis in for service, I had over 4 million stitches service tech told me they need to service at 2 million or seize up, which is what happened. Um... Yeah, I mean, I could understand, especially if there's no maintenance at all being done to those machines, which is why I tend to do the maintenance myself. But my machine is the small 4x4 Brother, and there's no support with that machine that you purchase from Walmart. So if there's anything to be done to that machine, I would have to be the one to initiate that. And there's no instructions in there that says take any in for regular service maintenance or anything like that. So I've had to learn to do my maintenance. But the bigger machine, it tells you certain things that you can do to maintain it. But yes, um, when I took my big machine in and I think I had two and a half million or something like that. And I told him, I was like, oh man, I got two million stitches. He kind of like laughed at me because he was like, that's not a lot of stitches you could have went a lot longer so i mean a lot of it depends on the service person that you go to because some service people um you know are like dime a dozen we're not worried about it and some service people are like we want this money so too many stitches you need to bring it in type situation so um but go with what they suggest to you um to make sure especially if they're warranting your machine definitely go with what they tell you Soraya Young says, what machine do you have? I have the um, Brother uh, 4x4 embroidery machine, the SE425. I have the PR655, which is also a six-needle Brother machine. And then I have the 15-needle Red Line embroidery machine, my big baby sitting over there. Um, PJ Coppage, you're welcome. Uh, Ray Fallow, I got a new Cricut Easy Press too. Not the 
easy press too. Congratulations. <laughs> Y'all easy press. And then Lucy says she got her Recoma EM 10 Yay! Power! Multi-needle in the house. <laughs> Multi-needle. That's what's up. Congratulations, ma'am. That was a big present to come in the mail, wasn't it? By truck, rather, I should say. Um, Let's see. Just be yo. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's see. I got a new baby, Just Be Yo, a singer, EM200, and named him Justin. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, look, how many of you guys in here that are YouTube Who Group members received your bell and are actually ringing it with us? That's what I want to know. How many people are ringing bells to <laughs> And, and terrorizing your house with all of these babies that are coming in. That is hilarious to me. I really want to know. <laughs> so let me know if you're ringing the bell at home too. Um, Let's see. You're welcome, Beverly Dudley. Uh, Let's see. Come on now. Come on now. American Eagle Embroidery and Graphics. Hey, love. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Um... I need to start using my Cameo 4 as well, Miss Bickham said. Yeah, because yours came, um, and we were supposed to be doing some projects, so we need to get that going. Miss Social Deb says, I just bought a Cricut Joy, still learning, but enjoying. Well, Miss Social Deb, congratulations! <laughs> Woo, on your Cricut Joy! It's a little baby. It's a little baby. That's what's up. Uh-oh, I see a new baby right here, too. Let's see. Um... Heather, I have a scanning cut machine and we'll have to we'll have to have time to work with it. Betty Stetcher, hello. And so crafty, welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. And she says, just got the new brother scanning cut DX. Already have the maker and silhouette. So congratulations on your new brother scanning cut. Woo! <laughs> Tyler, I don't know if you have if we rang the bell for you before, but we don't ring the bell again, just in case we didn't. Uh, let's see. Did I do it again? Mobile? Did I say mobile? I think I said mobile the last time, thank you. Did I say mobile? I'm bad about doing that. My husband fusses every single time because I'm bad about it. I don't know why I do that. Mobile, Alabama. Miss Pressure 412, good evening. I'm new here, and I just got a new brother, SE400. Love your channel in the Who Group. Well, congratulations, Miss Pressure. <laughs> yes, Tyler, that's what's up. <laughs> congratulations on your new baby. You have fun with that baby because um, that SE400 is a nice machine. I had that as well. So, yes, holler. T-Town t-shirts, winter hats. Yes, I do have a beanie video. I actually thought I was real cute in my beanie uh, hat that I embroidered on and it was super cute and I got that video. So yes, I do. If you're on our channel, you can just type in the search bar, baby's booty and beanies and it should pull up. It's an older video, but it still applies. <laughs> Walk by Faith from Texas. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Um, Miss Precious says, I was wondering if you were going live tonight. I'm glad I could catch you on your Easter. Yes, I am Eastern Standard Time. Yes, ma'am, definitely. Um, let us see. Ashley C., thank you for joining us live for the first time. We appreciate you being here. Iris Diaz, welcome. I missed you guys as well. Um, Kathleen Thompson, do you know of any brother dealers in Sarasota area really looking for a single needle at a reasonable cost? Thanks in advance. Kathleen Thompson, if you go to the Brother USA website, there is a dealer locator um, that you can type in and find one closest to you because, excuse me, because they do have it split up in regions. Um, so it will be one based on region. And I don't know how close your regional dealer is to you. And they do not overlap at all. Like you can't have one brother dealer too close from another one. Now, if you can't find like a brother dealer, you can also find a baby lock dealer. The baby lock dealer may be closer to you because that's basically the same machine. It's just one is like the uh, Lexus of the Toyota type situation. So you may want to look it up that way. But Brother USA, they do have a place where you can type in where you are and find a local dealer to you. 
Um, Stampin' Sue Create says, I purchased mine in February and had over 4 million. I guess that was a lot of stitches in a short period of time. And that's why, uh-oh, Avery Head is welcoming herself to the Hoop Group crew. Congratulations! I didn't see that. <laughs> Holla! Avery, if you don't already have a bell, be sure to email me if you want one and we'll send a bell to you. Yes. Um, let's see, let's see. Stampin' Sue Creates, I want to mention to you, that's why usually if there's someone that's doing a whole lot of embroidery, like they plan to make a business of it, and they're going to be doing a lot of embroidery, I definitely suggest an industrial machine. The red line is the way to go. And the reason why I say that is because the home machines really aren't built for that many stitches um, in a short period of time. They're not made for heavy duty work. They're made for project um, and home type embroidery, not, you know, super heavy duty turning out orders type stuff. Can you use it for that? Yes, you can. Will it wear it out faster? Yes, it will. But those industrial machines are made for that type of abuse. Um, I mean, they're used in sweatshops, sweat shops, for goodness sakes. So if you ever plan in the future, I'm sure now it's going to be down the road a little bit further because you just got a new machine. Uh, but definitely make plans for an industrial machine if you plan to do a lot of repetitive embroidery. All right. Um... Miss Precious says, thank you, you sure? Okay, cool. Beans, Sheldon, what type of maintenance can you do to the 4x4 Brother Embroidery Machine? I have the SE425. I do have a video out on maintaining the 4x4 Embroidery Machine. We will have a new video coming out uh, shortly as well on the 4x4 Embroidery Machines, but there is one out there on maintenance on your machine. There's a lot of maintenance that you actually can do. Um, and in making sure that things are running properly, I actually show you how to take the machine apart, right? So that will help you, well, partially apart, and it'll help you uh, find problem areas as well in the event that there's some hidden thread that you may not realize is there. Uh, but there is uh, a good bit that you can do. And we also have another new member, Ray Fallow. Welcome to the Hoop Group. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We definitely appreciate the support to our channel. Y'all, thank you very much. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, Let's see. We have the old Cricut Air, but use the Silhouette Business Program. Yes, Cameo has more features. The business program was worth the $50. Yes. And from what I understand, when it's on sale, it is definitely worth it. Uh, Pamela, Tanya, you said they're ringing. Everybody's ringing. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I'm sending out the bells to nobody. Oh, Lord, so crafty said no more bell ringing during the game. Tell him he's a full sport. <laughs> That's hilarious. Just that little bell isn't going to disturb his game. Let me hush before it's a fight. Now. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Marilyn Ray, welcome. No worries. Thank you for joining us. Soraya says, do you know how to attach a four by six and a half to a brother PE 550D? Um, what do you mean attach a four? You talking about the repositional hoop? If the 550D um should be just like the four by if it's the four by four embroidery machine, it should attach the exact same way the regular hoop does, but you have to have a program to help you split up your embroidery design to make it longer so that, you know, you can have more space to use in that hoop. So definitely um, check out our repositional video. And I think that shows you how to attach the hoop, the repositional hoop to the 4x4 embroidery machine. Um, Let us see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Laverne Miller says she's ringing the bell. The missus. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Now, I did say in my the baby shower place no worries welcome pamela banks welcome thank you for joining us now i did say in the hoop group on facebook and i think instagram that i have a bell ringer to ring tonight yes i do now granted some folks may say mm, there ain't no reason to ring a bell and my pain is the reason to ring the bell because my honey bunny bought it for me it was a surprise and 
it was spur of the moment, which I absolutely love the spur of the moment gifts. Those are like really fun because you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is so cool, you know, type situation. But it's also something I've wanted for a while. I just never really talked about it much because we were in the middle of moving and getting stuff together and resetting up the studio. But even in my old studio, I wanted one. So I said that it was something small, but very hot. All right. And many people um, made a lot of <laughs> guesses. And some came up with the um, heat press. They were mentioning the big old heat press. And I'm like, no, it's, it's not that big old. <laughs> it's not the big old heat press. It's small. Um, so I wanted to show you guys what I got. Um, as a gift from the Honey Bunny. So before I show you what it is, let me know what you think it might be. All right, let me think. Let me know what you think the gift might be, and I'll show you here shortly. Um, let's see. Good evening to the painted ladies. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the in family family. Oh, hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. So. I can't pronounce the name right now, but where can I learn digitizing? You have the Brother 625. If you want to learn true digitizing, um, like from scratch, no auto digitizing, check out, um, oh gosh, what is the name of his thing? Uh, it is called, mm, 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 mm. let me look it up. I'm drawing a blank. I know what I want to say, but... So digitizing made easy. That's what I was trying to remember. Digitizing made easy dot com. And I'm actually going to put it in the chat. Let me double check that and make sure that I'm spelling this right so that I don't send you to something crazy. Yes. Okay. So digitizing made easy is an excellent program. It's pricey. Um, it's using Wilcom. That's a pricey program as well. But if you're really, really, really wanting to learn digitizing, you're going to spend about 2 k on the program and the classes um, to learn. But you will be a an expert and you'll be able to digitize actually for hire uh, once you finish with his classes. Now, if you're not trying to go that extreme, you just want to stay small scale, there is an auto digitizing program that you can look into. And that's so art. So art. And if you go to my website, thebabiesbooty.com, and you click on So What Pro, it'll drop down a menu and you can select So Art. And there's a trial version. You can download it and try it out. Okay. And that'll, it's an auto digitizer though. So you can give that a shot and see if that'll help you out. It's more affordable because So Art is $75, whereas the other digitizing program, most digitizing programs are close to a thousand, if not a thousand dollars. All right. So definitely check that out. And you're welcome, Sheldon. Sheldon, sorry, Sheldon, you're welcome. Um, Easy Press Mini, Mini Press, New Heat Press, uh, The Joy, Miss Ethel Smith says, new. <laughs> well, I'm going to admit that um, Trisha says, hi, even everyone watching from Southern California having a really hard time changing needles. You shouldn't have too hard of a time changing needles. Um, holding on to the needles and putting them in what I would suggest. This uh, set of these will make it helpful to hold the needle. Now you can't squeeze too hard because these will bend the needle too, but you know, something, a little simple pair or something like this. I think you can get them from Walmart in the, uh, tools section or uh, Harbor Freight. I get these dirt cheap and use this to hold on to the needle to get it up in there. This will help. There's other tools out there to help with changing needles, but this one is like the most simple, affordable, and you can even use it as a tool around the house too. Um, but this should help you hold your needle if that's what the problem is. Hey, Lila Nelson, welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member and welcome. Hope you got some rest. Um, but I want to add in here, I want to admit, I actually did purchase a Cricut Easy Press Mini. This is not what I was talking about. My honey did not buy this for me. 
Um, I've had this for a while now. I got it. I want to say I got it. Well, not this one, but I got the Easy Press Mini back in maybe April or so. Um, somewhere not too long after, um, what's the name of that place? Hobby Lobby first opened back up. I got an Easy Press Mini and sent it to my parents for my mom and dad to use it to play with it because they were doing some things with vinyl and um, waited a couple of weeks to ask them about it because I forgot to ask them. And I'm like, how is it going with the Easy Press? And they was like, uh, it never worked. What? So they plugged it in. I, I ended up getting it from them and it didn't work. It was broken. It never worked from the store. So I called Cricket and it took them about two months, but they finally replaced it, sent the replacement. So this is brand new. I haven't even tried this one yet. So I don't even know if this works, but so I do have this that I could ring the bell for, but it's an old purchase. But this ain't from my honey, so I don't want to ring the bell for it. What I did get from my honey is right here. <laughs> Hems was super sweet, and he got it because I was like, I want this. He got me a cordless iron. Oh, my God. I'm going to ring the bell because my honey got it for me. Yay! <laughs> I don't think I've ever rang the bell for an iron before. So, yay! <laughs> but I got a cordless iron. It's something I've always wanted. I got this from uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, but I'm pretty sure they have these on Amazon too. I'll link it. Uh, but I always wanted cordless because one of the things that I don't like is getting tangled up in the cord because I move around so much in pleating and doing the face mask because I do... Um, sublimated face masks that I custom make and hand make pleat them and then embroider them on the machine so to put in the pleats I'm all over the place doing masks at the same time as pleating so cordless was just the way to go so I haven't even opened it yet even though the box looks a little bit beat up but I haven't even opened it yet because I ended up getting sick um not long after he got it and I haven't done any work or anything so this is my new baby and i'm super excited because i've heard a lot of really good things about cordless iron and the cool thing about this one is the reviews are off the charts for it the review is like five stars like and that's crazy to me because i'm a big review person and read reviews so super excited about this purchase and it was affordable, y'all. It wasn't super expensive. And I know usually with gifts, you don't want folks to know how much you spend. Um, but I was there when he bought it, and it wasn't super expensive. So I was really happy about that. Um, and for whatever reason, is it just me? Or did Bed Bath & Beyond get rid of their 20% coupon? Tripping off of that. So I didn't have the 20% off coupon, but we had the $20 off coupon if you bought over a certain amount. So I think they're changing and going to $20 off instead of 20% and not feeling that at all, but that's their choice. So here we go. Isn't that cute? The color doesn't match my room, but I don't care. Um, and so here we go with our um, iron. You can lock it in place. Looks like unlock it. And there we go and charge under there and iron. Oh! Now, you know, you're getting old. When you get excited over an iron <laughs> and happy about ironing because one thing I don't and never have liked to do is iron. But in my job working here in the shop, I have to iron. I don't have a choice. So it helps to have something totally awesome to iron with. Yay! So at any rate, for those who guessed, nobody guessed an iron. <laughs> Because I know we probably don't think an iron is something cool, but to me, it was very, very cool. All right, so going. <laughs> she said, she said the cricket joy on Facebook, and you sticking with it. No worries, no worries. So, y'all, I got me a new iron. So, I will link you guys in the um, description on where you could get one off of Amazon if you want one, or you can check it out at Bed Bath & Beyond. You will have to look it up, though, because not all of them have it. So, yes, the needle nose pliers, hopefully that will help you. Um, Susan, Susan Curran, hello from Tillensburg, Ontario, Canada. Welcome. 
just received my new PE 535 embroidery machine and can't hardly wait to use it. Thank you for all your wonderful videos. You're welcome. <laughs> Congratulations on your new baby. That's what's up. Uh, Contessa, no worry. Welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. Miss Iris Diaz says, I have the Singer XL400, and even though it came with two hoops, 4x4 and 5x7, I wanted a larger size for bigger designs. Haven't been able to find one. Um, So, if you... I'm not sure about the Singer XL400, but if you go onto Amazon and type in repositional hoop, for, actually, I think you can just type in repositional hoop. And then once you click on one and see if you can find the larger size for the XL400, I would do it. But the way my signal has been acting tonight, I don't want to get disconnected. But that would be the way to do it. See, like my, it looks like my signal just dropped just now. Um, but check that out. You know what? I'm going to just say screw it and try it anyway. Amazon.com. And let's look up repositional hoop singer. Whoops. XL400. And see if one pulls up. So. I don't see one. What is this? Uh, actually, what is this? Nope, that's Innovis. Um, I do not see one, but I'm also just like skimming and scrolling through um, to see what's out there. What is this one? Nope, baby lock, embroidery machine, Innovis, simplicity. Mm -mm. I don't see singer. So I would say, and there's not very many options out there. Uh, let's see what this one says. This is for Artista. I don't even know what the Artista is. Okay, so that won't work. Um, but that would be how to find one. Also, check your um, Singer website for accessories and see if maybe they would have one. Um, but this one, yeah, and this one is for Bernina. So I don't see one for the Singer. I'm sorry. But in a lot of instances, that would be how to find the repositional hoop. So, yes. Um uh, that would how that would work. Uh, let's see. Small hands on. Nope. <laughs> I already have the um. No, I don't. The handheld. Miss Beckham. The handheld uh rhinestone wand. I thought I had it, but I forgot. It is just a soldering iron, and I'm not gonna use that. Lars lace fabrics. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Lars lace fabrics flying next week to North Carolina. Yes, come out here have a ball. North Carolina is nice. I bought a mini when they first came out, but I've never used it. Check it, Miss Debbie, because uh, it did not work. Um, so, you guys, if you have any questions, I'm just going through the chat. Make sure. <laughs> Betty Stetcher says, Eve, he's a keeper. <laughs> yes, him he is. I mean, after 21 years, if I ain't keeping him now, there's a problem. Even though I know some folks do split ways, but I ain't got time for all that. Ain't nobody trying to start over. But that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother channel. That's for Eve After Dark channel. <laughs> um, I wanted to buy that same one. Gina says you will have to do a review on it after you use it. I sure will. You know I will. I'll review everything. I love it. Uh, You love your cordless iron. Dorothy Gaston says, y'all. Oh, Shay got it and love it. Y'all. Shay, thank you, Shay. Holler, come through with the review. Um, you're gonna love it. My honey got me one last year. Holler, y'all. Okay, okay. Cordless irons are great. Let us know how it works. I was thinking about getting that iron, y'all. Y'all, they do still have it. Okay, cool. Miss Shirley Stewart got one. Yeah, oh, they sell it at Walmart too, Gina. That's what's up. Holler, okay. I'm feeling better. 
I mean, I wasn't super worried because of the five stars, but I hear it was a really good machine. No, you still get the 20% off coupon. Okay, well, somebody needs to send me one because I didn't get it. Um, well, actually, it's too late. We already used the $20 off coupon, but um, it was because I bought something else too. Um, that iron is real nice in my brain. <laughs> oh my God, that is hilarious. I ain't heard his boys in a while. I need to look it up. Congrats on the mini and the iron. I have the Panasonic cordless iron. I love it. So I bought two. One for each of my sewing centers. That doesn't sound impressive. Love the cordless. Yas. Doesn't that sound impressive? It does sound impressive. Miss Social Dev. Yes, it does. <laughs> so it does heat and it does heat press for everyone that says heat press. Well, technically, yes. Technically, yes. For those that say heat press. Technically, that's what this is. Um... And it was super cute. I don't think it goes to 400. I can't remember. But it's got three heat settings. And I know it's they they tout it for the um, infusible ink thing that Cricut does that kind of like didn't really take off very well. Um, so it says it can use it for that. So I'm assuming it goes to 400 because I, I would guess that they're... Um, ink goes needs 400 degrees like everybody else's ink but I haven't even as you see I haven't even opened it yet because it took a while for it to get here when I was going to use it I didn't have it so I just never like, opened it but super cute can't wait till they do more colors of their stuff but um try to plug this thing up and turned it on and it was just like nope the light lit up and everything. It was just like, mm -mm, nope, don't feel like heating up. You'll be all right. You don't need me. Well, Easy Press kind of do need you, but I had to send it back. So, but they were real cool. By the time I finally got through to their customer service um, and was able to talk to somebody finally, they were real cool about replacing it. And I had my receipt anyway, so that worked out because otherwise I was going to take it back to the store. Is Sew Up Pro just for embroidery designs? Yes. Yes, it is. That is an embroidery uh, program. You was going to guess the Glowforge? Several people on Facebook guessed the Glowforge. I would love to try that Glowforge. I called Glowforge, well, email, instant message, something. I, it wasn't call. It was instant message. And they were more than willing to set me up with a uh, account and all that jazz. But when I saw the price, I was like, ooh, Glowforce is going to have to wait a little bit because I just moved in. <laughs> just moved in. And I need a fence and a couple of other things. So, yeah, no, Glowforce is going to have to wait. But um, one day, I do hope to try the Glowforge and we'll see about... Um, whether or not it's gonna work so let's see hey my other one didn't beep so that's a good sign at least now it beeps and we'll see if it heats up because it's turning red as a matter of fact the other one didn't even turn orange or nothing and yes i feel heat already ah! so yeah it works it works and he has a little um uh, little stand thingy with my bobby to help him stay uh cool and not burn me or nobody else so I thought that was pretty cute. The little mini looks cute. So I'm, I'm excited about giving it a shot and trying it out. I have a couple of projects coming up that I think it will be helpful for. Uh, but it's going to be a minute before I do those. I got a, a niece that wants some jeans done. So we'll see about using it for that. Um, no one guessed it, but I'm pretty sure most of us would love to have one for our crafting space. Great gift hubby, Latasha said. Thank you. Him's listening, so he would love to uh, know that you guys were impressed with him's gift. Um, she said, I said soldering iron, so I was halfway, right? <laughs> halfway, yes. Uh, let's see. Just unpacked my new Burnett 79 yesterday, joining for the first time. Susan Ness says, well, congratulations, Susan Ness. We're going to ring the bell for you, <laughs> Congratulations, y'all, yes, on your new Burnett 79. Awesome sauce. Need tips for alignment in the hoop. Sometimes I can align it properly, but not always. Okay, so aligning in the hoop, I am a huge, huge proponent, I guess is the word. I want to make sure I'm using the right wording 
Um, but when you are trying to do alignment, always mark your fabric, always, because one of the things that people don't think of is maybe I'm going to have to go back and do this again or fix a problem or what have you. So if you're marking your fabric, I just do a simple crosshair. Sometimes I just do one line across. Um, get marking material. So I use, uh, this is chalk, a chalk roller. I also use uh, the water-soluble markers that uh, water erases, and I keep water with a little bit of vinegar in it and either a spray bottle or a little spritz bottle. Usually I use the little spritz bottle. It's got a little itty bitty bit of vinegar in it. For whatever reason, it just like really eats that um, that uh, air erasable marker away. Um, and I don't have an issue with it coming back. But test it in a small area first before you like go ham on using it on a project. And I do a light line. I don't go heavy with it either because you want to make sure you can get all of it out. But I have yet to have a problem getting it out with that vinegar versus water method so like in this bottle barely cover the bottom if that much of vinegar in the rest is water and likewise in here just barely vinegar like cap full of vinegar um so that your stuff doesn't smell like pickles but that will help eat that erasable marker away um there's also heat erasable markers with something that you're going to iron the friction pins are really good for that um, that was a gift from um, one of my favorite viewers. And you can, so there's a number of items you can use in a pinch. You can use pins. I don't suggest pins because if you forget to take them out, they will uh, damage your embroidery machine, especially if you don't have them out of the way. But in a pinch and you leave them way out of the way, you can even use pins to mark your fabric. But mark your fabric so that it will make it easier if you have to go back and fix something your pins are there and you can always realign it but that's what i use and so miss susan currens welcome to the <laughs> thank you we appreciate you joining us and we appreciate the support of the channel if you would like to receive a bell please be sure to email me as you see down here below the baby's booty just add at gmail.com and then send me an email with your name, your mailing address, and your YouTube name, Susan Kearns, and we will get a bell right out to you. I'm so super excited. You're nervous about doing appliques? Oh, no. Do we need to do an applique video? Do we need to do an applique video, y'all? Let me know. Let me know. Um, Marilyn Ray got her iron from Amazon. Nice. Let me make sure. I, too, have the Panasonic cordless iron. They do a set of three sizes. Uh-oh, that's a different machine Marilyn Ray is talking about. And let's see. Trying to become a hoop group captain and having trouble. I don't want the lower one. <laughs> um, I think you can, I don't think you can upgrade in the same month. I don't know. Um, because this is uh, the membership thing is all on YouTube. I have no control at all to none of it. Um, so you can definitely, um, try it out and see if it will let you adjust your membership. So you would go to go out to the main YouTube and click your picture and do, you know, account or settings or something like that and then do membership and see if it'll let you change it. But I think if you could change it, you can change it on the join page as well. I'm not 100% sure. Um, that I think Singer XL machine capability is 10 by 6. I'm not sure. She has the 400 though, Miss Marsha Jones. So if the 400, if the xl 400 does have the 10 by 6 capability you can try ebay and see if you can get a bigger hoop to go with your machine um miss beckham says i just want one because i want one but i know i have to hunt down every time i want to use it the iron oh no 
That's how it is when you get a new toy. Everyone wants to play with it. Yeah, well, I don't have that problem. Thank goodness. Most of my toys out here in the shop stay uh, for me. Miss Social Day of the Mini does go to 400. Sweet. So I know I can use it for small sublimation, like on masks and stuff. That's good to know. Margo says, hello to everyone. Hope that you all had a nice anniversary, which you all many more. God continue to bless and keep you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We did have a really nice anniversary. Um, Let's scroll back down so that I can see. She said, yes, 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 please. For, um, applique. I love applique. It's not my favorite thing to do, but it's so cute. And it saves on stitches, actually. That's the thing I love about applique as well. It saves on stitches. You don't have to worry about doing a bunch of fill ends and stuff like that. So that's the really cool. And <laughs> Avery Head, you figured it out. <laughs> Avery Head, congratulations <laughs> on your upgrade. She figured that thing out. I don't know what you did, but I'm glad you figured it out. <laughs> um, Matt's YouTube upgrades and it'll prorate. Sweet. That's what's up. Uh, please do an applique, applique. Okay, cool. We'll have to do an applique video. We'll do a simple applique video and maybe we'll do an applique um, class as well because applique is really cool. Uh, and there's so many things you can do with applique. People don't realize it. It's just actually really cool. Um, my first try on a dish towel with tearaway stabilizer resulted in tons of holes around the stitching. What did I do wrong? Um, first of all, probably, Miss Susan, the embroidery design that you chose probably was heavy with stitching on the edges. All right. So that will cause a lot of holes around the stitching. Um, and I would say, oh, I would need to see what design it is. So if you are not, come into the Facebook hoop group and post a picture of that towel so that I can see what design it is that you have. And we'll help you further with it there because you said dish towel though also if it's a thin towel you'll have some holes as well like a, a flower sack towel they tend to have holes um because the weave is kind of open it's not like a really tight weave so a lot of times you'll have holes with those as well so depending upon the design um, you may have to get a more towel friendly design so to speak and those would be your light. And if it's the flower sack type that doesn't have a pile, your light airy line type designs are great for flower sack towels. Um, the thicker, heavier designs are not conducive to the flower sack towels. Those are better on your thick, not thick, but your pile type towels. Okay. So there's a lot of factors that you have to keep in mind when you're doing embroidery on your different projects. Okay. Um, let's see. It may say, okay, we did that. This may not count, but my sweetie just got me an IQ robot and it just finished my studio and now it's going on its way. What's an IQ robot? <laughs> Is that the, um, carpet thingy? <laughs> That's cute if it is. Um, tell the IQ robot come my way if that's what it is. <laughs> I want to know. Uh, Felicia Storm, Eve noticed that my membership emoji is not showing. Check my card and it was charged. I plan to track down the issue. I want you to have yours. You deserve it for all you do. Thank you. I definitely appreciate that. Um, yes, that would be a YouTube issue. So please contact YouTube on that and they should fix it for you. So, yas. Applique is very gratifying, Robin says, yas. Why are tea towels so big? What are they actually for? Shirley Stewart, Lord help me. I uh, said the same thing um, when I got my tea towels. I'm trying to think of where they are because I have a set of tea towels. And those things are huge. But I know I've seen them used for like rising dough. You know, putting over the bowl so it needs to be big to work with, you know, putting over bowls and stuff like that. But uh, aside from that, I don't know. <laughs> so for those of you who are uh, tea towel aficionados and know what all the tea towels are generally used for and why they're that big, drop it in the chat below because I really don't know. Never really 
use a tea towel other than embroidering on it, and they are massive. Um, there's a couple of times where I've actually cut it down and rehemmed it to make it a little bit smaller, but um, why? Uh, yes, it is with all these floors. Oh, sweet, your little your little robot. Can we ring the bell for the little robot? Robot. Oh, wait a minute. You said the robot was gone, so he's not gonna hear the bell being rang for him. But I guess it kind of don't matter because it's for the studio. Little bell. <laughs> Little bell ring for the little robot. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm about to give me a robot. Oh God, let me shut up because I just got to iron. Um, what did I just see? Hold on. Red work style designs. Yes, I love my mini. Good for shoes, masks, and small projects. Cool. Thank you, uh, Jeannie, for that uh, tip. Have you noticed a difference in the way satin stitches out on a single needle versus a multiple needle? My 4x4 four four is getting a workout on satin stitches, and it sounds like a battle. Well, you have to understand that um, satin stitches are, it has to gauge and then go side to side. So it slows down the embroidery machine, no matter what machine you're using. Because even my multi-needle, the satin stitches slow the machine down. Um so because of that, yes, it's going to affect the stitch out of the project. The satin stitches are so gorgeous. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, they make for excellent embroidery and they make for stress-free embroidery in most instances because if you make an error, I wish I had, um, I do have a picture, by the way. Um, for instance, I did a towel this weekend. And let's see. I made a towel, actually last week I made the towel for my son, and the date changed. Uh -oh, let's go here. So I don't know if you're able to see this, but here's the towel that I did for him. And the date changed, so that says 10-10. But the date actually changed to 10, um, 17. So it was Saturday that needed to be on the towel. Well, that zero, all of the, actually the whole font is satin stitches. So I was able to take a seam ripper to the back side of that towel and just go up the middle of those satin stitches and then pull those stitches out. Man, that was like one of the easiest. Now. So Peggy Stitch Eraser, I as I've mentioned over and over and over again, Peggy Stitch Eraser needs to be in every embroidery arsenal, every last one of them, every last one of them. So if you don't have a Peggy Stitch Eraser and you do embroidery, you need to get one because there is going to come a time where you're going to mess up. And if this towel was a $20 towel, so if I needed to replace this towel because it had the wrong date, that's a whole lot of another 20. So now I'm $40 in. And if I was getting paid for this towel, then I've eaten up my profit probably if I didn't charge it up. So that being the case, you need a Peggy Stitch Eraser. <clears throat> but for satin stitches, you don't have to have the Peggy Stitch Eraser because that, that, uh, seam ripper can go up the middle of those satin stitches that column and just plow right through them and it did it was so easy to take those stitches out it was phenomenal and i was able to take those stitches out and then change them to the zero to the seven and put the right date on there after lining it back up um it took a while and i had to hold my mouth right but we were able to get the date changed and um, it turned out absolutely beautiful. So I didn't have to, didn't have to have a whole new towel. Okay. So yes, the, um, how did we even get on the topic of that? We were talking about something else. Oh, satin stitches. So the satin stitches, yes, it sounds like a battle on the machine, McGee, S McGee rather, but satin stitches are absolutely phenomenal. I love satin stitches. So let it fight its way out and it'll be absolutely beautiful when it's done. Used to use tea towels as aprons. Oh, that's smart. I didn't think of that. 
How can I get grease off of my quilt? It came off the machine when I quilted it, Heather says. Um, Heather, I use... Uh, hold on. I use this. Uh, off camera, sorry. Nobody's ever had that before. <clears throat> For getting stains and stuff like that. Off of... Um, off of your projects. I use this. It's called Quilter Stain Remover. QSR. Um, I got this from Texmac. Direct. Texmac is a happy embroidery machine, folks. And I purchased this. Yeah. I purchased this from them. It's uh, item number 1504. So if you want to look it up, um, it was $16.95 or 17 bucks for this little container, but it comes with a felt thing to help rub and agitate the fabric and get stains out. The thing is, uh, I think there's, oh gosh, what's the name of that stuff? I think it's, uh. Y'all, I'm drawing like, I'm getting old. This is crazy. Ammonia. I think there's ammonia in it. Because one time, normally when I use it, I don't get that smell. But the last time I used it, I kind of smell ammonia. So I think there's an ammonia component to it. So just be careful. And it does say that it is uh, a hazard for skin and stuff. But when I tell you it gets out stains, it gets out stains. So, um water ammonia oh it is ammonia in there okay duh aqueous solution hydro acetyl sodium dye something whatever sulfate yeah whatever so yeah this quilter stain remover it does work it removes blood milk tea coffee soda other beverages all kinds of food stains pet stains uh, perspiration ink and more so this possibly could work but test it in a small spot first but i have gotten a lot of stains out with that um let me make sure what i'm doing okay let's see i remember a while ago you had an embroidery design that was really large was it on the red line jj digitized the design and it has 99 thread changes programming will be a nightmare yeah, program will be a nightmare uh, for you on that one. Um, if it was really large, nine times out of ten, it was on the red line. But I did have a design late last year. What was it, a year before? I think it was year before where I had an apron and it was a scene for a farm, a person in a farm, um, or she owned a farm. And it had a lot of thread changes in it. And it I did that on the six needle. And I constantly was changing threads for that design. And I that was a pain in the butt. I did not charge enough for that. I did not charge enough for that. Um, but programming it, yes, it will be a pain. I'm sorry, Miss Lula, because that's a lot of thread changes. But make sure you charge for it because it is going to be a nightmare. To do unless it's a personal project and then you know you kind of got to go with the flow on that one um it is in the middle of the quilt now that i have finished making it so yeah try the quilt stain remover and see if that will work um you say the tea towels dry dishes without leaving lint on glasses that's cool dawn dishwashing liquid would take grease out of just about anything heather that is an excellent point it does they even use it to take the oil off the little baby penguins and stuff. So, yes, that will work. Tanyu says tea towels are large, so they can be wrapped around the teapot to keep it warm, prevent drips, and keep your hands from getting burned. Good to know. Especially since I am uh, not a tea person. And I saw someone says, oh, gosh, you guys came through with the tips on this grease. Felicia Storm, try talcum powder or baking soda if you can't wash it to get the grease out. Teresa Jackson says, you've been canning cinnamon pears, 25 jars. Girlfriend, that's what's up. I want to try canning, but that's a horse of a different color. Totally different channel, totally different subject. 
Um, let's see, Luli, welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I don't think I've said hello to you today. Ben Corn, hello, welcome. Nikomi Butler, hello, welcome. As always, thank you for joining us. Um, Ethel Smith says, I forgot my Peggy I bought last week. Awesome. Do we need to ring the bell for the Peggy? I say ring the bell for the Peggy Fisher Race because that's, you know, kind of pricey as well. And it's a staple, staple in everybody's arsenal. You should definitely have it. In your studio, Peggy Fisher Racer. <laughs> and of course, any reason we get to ring a bell, we need to ring a bell. Uh, Cassie Toll. Hey, Cassie Toll. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I did get your messages. Been busy, 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 but I will be getting back with you. ASAP. Allison says, I want to do applique, but can't seem to find a design I like. Then the ones I ever see are for kids. I don't have a child in my life. And Allison, you're absolutely correct. The majority of appliques are for children. There are a few options out there. And there are things that you can do to use applique um, aside from children's design. So when we put um, a video together, we'll showcase some more adult and mature designs so that you don't have to worry about just kitty designs. Um, Marge Campbell says, 100% cornstarch, sprinkle well, rub it in, wait about 10, 20 minutes and brush it off. Does that not leave? Well, I guess it'll absorb all the oil, so that makes sense. Um, Cassie Toll got your bell. Oh, yes. The tea towels are also considered dish towels. Did not know that. Um, needed a Peggy Stitch Eraser last week when I messed up a beanie. Okay, so now the one thing I will say about the Peggy Stitch Eraser, which is what I was going to say, that's what I forgot to say. On the towel, that's not necessarily a good idea to use a Peggy Stitch Eraser on the towel because you have the pile fabric and you don't want the blades of the stitch eraser to accidentally cut the pile or shave the pile on the towel so to be 100 percent sure i didn't do any damage to the towel fibers i just used the seam ripper um, because that's more conducive to all of that extra fabric but if you're doing a um, cotton or like a beanie is that knit fabric so you would need to be really careful uh, because it doesn't take much to cut fibers in a beanie and tear put a hole in a beanie um or a skull cap or whatever you want to call it so unless it's flannel um just be a little bit careful with the peggy stitch eraser on um knit fabrics a neat a good design has a lot of applique images we will have to find one I was embroidering on a tea towel and got stitched on both sides. It was not a good thing. I was embroidering a tea towel and stitched on both sides. You didn't like how it turned out. If it's folded over, it may not be too terribly bad. I made those little purses last week. They turned out great. That's what's up. Yeah, I got the picture of your purses. Um, those are so stinking easy to make and so awesome and fun. So yes, the little purses, if you haven't, seen them and you're interested in them it's badbobbin.com check them out and they're in the hoop um in the hoop projects section uh, for anyone who might be thinking about an easy press mini i saw a video on youtube from makers gonna learn regarding if you can only buy one easy press buy the mini buy the mini because it's versatile and you can carry it with this thing is so little you can pop that in a pocketbook and take it with you and do some work somewhere if you wanted to. I think that's really neat about it. That's what's up. Um, Ray Fallow, I'm going to put the link here so that you can go to badbobbin.com. Peroxide mixed with half and half with white vinegar works with oil stains also, she says. Do you have a link to it in one of your past videos, Leslie Royals? I have a link to my um, Amazon page in the description, but I'll link it here. Hopefully, I'll be able to link it here as well. I don't know if I can. We're going to give it a shot. But sometimes uh, Amazon won't let me. And I was, there's a couple of options, but this is the one that I have here. 
And this is, I'm going to put this. That's for the Peggy Stitch Eraser. Let me see, did it come through? Yes, it did. Oh, you're welcome. For oil stains in a pinch, put cornstarch on the spot or powder rub it and let it sit and then brush it off. Albatross works well also. A um, bunch of In The Hoop projects, a YouTube channel as well. Oh, Cassie told, thank you for putting that there. Um, I use my tea towels for everything. Wet, wring it out and fold it to fit your hand. Hot flat top stove cleans, hot flat top stove cleans the grease easily. Really now, I have to remember that. No, I'm charging, and I have alerted the customer. It's 20 different colors. going to try to condense to 15. It was the farm design I was talking about. So you did a farm design, too. Yeah, um, when it's that many. Now, you can. See, this is the thing. You can um, use Sew Up Pro and join colors. But the problem with that is the digitizer set it up where it will digitize a certain way so if you mess with the colors on that aspect it'll affect the final stitch out but if you talk to the digitizer like JJ and tell him you want to do less stitches then see what he says about it and he may be able to um, help you break down the colors without messing with the stitch out of it um, hi, you're welcome for the bell, Cassie. Allison Halloway, you're welcome as well. Um, Miss One says, Teresa Jackson, my name is Teresa Jackson too. We got a lot of family in here with similar names. I got a lot of Debbies that come in and enjoy our videos live. Shirley Stewart says, I think I'll cut mine down and him up. They just seem so huge to embroider and use for a regular dish towel. Yes. All right, you guys. So, Carmen Alvarado, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. You got your bell. Awesome. We rang it so much tonight. You're going to have to watch the replay and ring your bell, girl. Um, But welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. Y'all, I tried to use the Peggy's on a t-shirt and ended up putting a hole in it. Yes, now with the Peggy's, cornstarch is better for oil. Marge says, I was reading the comments of what everybody else says, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Um, oh, you mean other than this, then that's a very good possibility. I don't know, but this is one thing I have been using to get stains and stuff out. Um, I don't think I've gotten oil on anything yet. I don't think, but I'll keep that, um, uh, in mind. Andrea Michelle, welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, I'm so hooked on those mini purses. How fun. Thanks for sharing that with us. I would like to see more fun projects, perhaps. As soon as I come across more fun projects. So that's one of the things that um, I've been dealing with over the last month. It's like I'm trying to find really cool projects to feature. And I search online a lot trying to find some stuff that I think is like super, super cool. Um that I think would be a hit and catch on. Um, but, of course, I'm at the mercy of the folks who are coming up with these designs and finding stuff. So, as a matter of fact, I was searching. There was one day I had downtime, and I searched last week uh, to find something because I like to find really cool projects to work with, my cap work with the captains on and send to them. And I just, I've been hitting dry lately. They, it's just, I haven't seen... Anything really spectacular or really cool that stands out to me, but whenever I do, I send it out. That's like, yeah, no, we don't do this project this month or then or next month. Um, but I haven't came across anything super crazy. So once I do, I'll let you guys know definitely and share it with you. Actually, there is one, and I've already shared it with the captains, but I'd never got to stitch it out with them. So we may do that because you know what? That's that's an excellent idea. I think that's what we'll do next week is this. Or what did I say I was going to do? I'm going to have to go back and watch the video. Applique is what we were talking about. So between applique and um, this other project, let me put a message. 
so that I won't forget again and see about doing a video and project. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's so simple. Four by four machines, larger machines can do it and we don't have to worry about it. Um, and everybody can join in on that. After you, whoops, I saw a question. Oh, you're welcome, Avery Head. Thank you for letting me know you got it. Um, Where was it? After you embroider, Miss Presha says, are you supposed to remove all the stabilizer from the back? There's usually some remaining on the back of the numbers. So when you're using cutaway, you're supposed to leave roughly about half an inch to an inch of stabilizer around the embroidery and not cut it all away. So for instance, this is a jacket I just did and here's the uh, back side of it and you leave the extra around. Now there's a couple of places where I got super close but that's because for the most part the embroidery on here I don't usually have any issues out of their embroidery but if it's cut away you want to leave some around the embroidery if it's tear away well, i mean you tear away as much as you possibly can uh and clean it up you don't want to really leave tear away tear away is not super cute um <laughs> so to speak so i would try and get as much of it off as you can you can kind of like rub it with a eraser and kind of sort of get some of that out of the little nooks and crannies but for the most part um, you can, you can take away every bit of the tear away, um, stabilizer. All right. Leela Nelson, no, mine is not a farm design. Yours was, oh, I thought you said farm. Mine was, is the picture of Jesus with the little girl posted. I could have swore up there. You said something about a farm, but yes. Um, but even still, that's a lot of changes. You have Janome digitizing software made by Wilcom, but did you digitize it and it came up with 99 changes or did JJ's digitize it and it had 99 changes um, because usually when you do uh, digitizing with software especially if it's like auto digitize it's not going to care how many color changes is in the thing um, unless you have a setting where you can tell it how many colors you want in it and it will adjust because I think Wilcom Hatch has that option um, in it so let me know because I want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly. It, it can come across crazy in chat sometimes. Just made my second order with Hudson Textiles 2. It's coming this week. Hudson Textiles has excellent vinyl. Um, Ms. Beckham, I got the cordless. Um, I have three with one being cordless and it stopped holding a charge for any length of time. I recommend the cord if they've been in use about 20 years. I have the cordless. Um, have yet to have any issues with charging because you remember my dad was borrowing my Peggy Stitch eraser for a little bit. Um, but even still, I don't like leave it plugged up all the time. Um, I use it until it starts to go down and then I, but you can notice that things, the rechargeable batteries do go down some after a while in most rechargeable things. So yes, that's always going to be a problem with any item that you, even this iron, it's cordless and there's a battery in that. So over the years, that battery is going to eventually wear out um, and we'll have to either replace the battery or replace the iron. Um, so yes, that is a problem with most cordless items. Um, I saw that, Trina. Let me go back and look and see what, because I have to go back and forth and seeing what you were talking about. I didn't see it. Katrina. Mm, I'm missing what, what you put on there. Let's see. I still need to figure out what tool I'm going to get to put rhinestone rivets on. Um, it's the same tool for rivets, which of course I don't have that in here because it's been a while. Well, actually I do. No, I don't. I took it I took it back. I took that container back with my rivet tool in it. Um, but you can go to Hobby Lobby if you have a Hobby Lobby. And they have a couple of rivet tools. Just don't buy the red one. I think it was the red one that broke on me. It was like the wimpiest rivet tool ever. Um, but 
Hobby Lobby has rivet tools. Michael's has rivet tools too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Walmart, if I'm not mistaken, even has rivet tools. It's got like a, a wheel with a bunch of spikies all in it so that you can do different sizes, punch the hole, and then there's a section where you can rip it, I think, unless I'm thinking of just the hole punch. And if I'm thinking of just the hole punch, then the rivet tool is in the same area and you can do rivets with that one. It's been a while, y'all, since I fooled with that and I don't have them in here to show you what's what. Because the only thing I have in here are my snap pliers and that's that has nothing to do with rivets. Um, do you actually get 4x4 or 5x7 or whatever space to embroider on the machine? No, you do not. No, you do not. Um, miss one. You don't because the machine, um, as I've explained in a couple of other videos, um, like for instance, the 4x4 embroidery machine, it is... They change the size to four by four, which is four inches by four inches, which is the standard uh, version of math used pretty much in just the U.S., maybe Canada. But for the most part, that's a U.S. thing to use inches and feet and yards, whereas in every other country, for the most part, they use the metric um, math. So our four by four is actually 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. Well, 100 millimeters is not equal to four inches. It's actually less. So four inches, uh, I'm sorry, 100 millimeters is actually something like 3.84 inches. It's not a full four inches. So you don't get a full four inches or five inches or seven inches. You don't get those full measurements on your embroidery machine. You get the actual metric version of those inches. So the five by seven is like five, uh, 200 millimeters by, I think it's 300 millimeters or something like that. Um, so you get those millimeters, but you don't get the inches version, if that makes sense. Um, so, yet, yeah, no, you don't get the full four inches in answering your question because you actually get the metric amount uh, for embroidery. Smart needle embroidery. Oh, you know what, uh, Marion? I did see some. I saw an m, m one that I thought was really cute. So we'll look into that. But I still, I wanted to find like a generic one that wasn't quite like specific to a holiday. I wanted it to be a generic one so that somebody could do whatever they wanted to with it. Uh, but I did see candy holders, which I thought were kind of cute. Um, <laughs> Hudson had some super cute vinyl fabrics. I'm so in love with making those things in the bow purse too. Yeah, the bow purse is cute. I haven't done that yet. Um, I love smart needle. I haven't looked at smart needles, so we don't have to check them out. Um, what's it? You're welcome, Miss Prisha. Looking for a good digitizer, Contessa says. I usually do. Oh, JJ digitized it. Okay. So you can either check with him, Miss Leela, and have him condense down the amount of colors and color changes and let him know, hey, that's too many. Um, or you can see if your digitizing program will auto-digitize it if you can tell it how many stitches, uh, stitch change colors to do. If you can. I don't know if you can with your, your uh, software. Um, Contessa, I use jjdigitizing.com. Um, so if you're interested in getting something digitized, he digitizes insane embroidery designs that are like, wow, that's a whole live picture. He digitizes on that level. Um, I have adorable applique. They all, they have all applique for everyone. I also have so sweetly also have them Heather said, so we'll have to check them out. Hobby Lobby has some nice vinyl, from what I understand, Joanne's Fabrics is starting to carry um, some really nice vinyl as well. Um, I got the cordless Peggy and it stopped charging after a couple of months and sent it back. Hope I get it replaced. Uh, I, have, I haven't had one to act up, but like I said, you're still dealing with rechargeable batteries. So that's a possibility with anything dealing with a rechargeable battery. 
Um, let us see. Any more questions from anyone? Let me know. No, you don't hit. The only thing you hit with the hammer is when you're putting a hole in using the hole punch part, like the owl or whatever you call it. I don't think you hit these with a hammer because you just squeeze it. And I mean, and you don't even have to squeeze it hard and it will do your... And yes, it will break the rhinestones even if you squeeze it too hard because I've cracked a couple of rhinestones even with my snaps and had to pull them out, pry them out, and replace them. Allison says, this is totally random. Um, but ever since I heard you talk about sublimation, I've been really interested in it. But all of a sudden, everyone is out of the Epson printer. Yeah. Any ideas? Well, from what I understand, Sam's has the Echo Tank printers um, at a really inexpensive price. So Echo Tank, Epson has come out with a printer that has tanks where you can just pour in your own ink and refill it. Um, the Echo Tank is an option. And from what I understand, there are more of those in the market now um, because people are still looking at the uh, ones that are out because the 7710 and the 7720s were so popular and they were very affordable. They were like 150 and sometimes you could even get them less than that. But the Echo Tank is a little bit more, um, but Sam's has the best part, or they had the best price. I, I don't know if it was on sale or what. So you can may check for that. So just type in e Epson Echo Tank and see if you can find one of those. So that that you can put sublimation ink and use it. Um, you're welcome, Tanya. Yes, they're, and they're affordable. Hudson Textiles is very affordable. I quilt daily. I try to use nothing liquid on any oil spots, colors can fade or run. That's good to know. You're welcome, Miss 143. Miss Precious says, does Hobby Lobby or Joanne sell the vinyl you can add to appliques on shirts? Um, yes, it does. Um, it may be limited though. So definitely, um, now, there's a couple of things you can use for, because not all applique is vinyl. Some applique is uh, fabric is another option for applique. Um, also, you can use the heat press vinyl. So that would be the iron on vinyl. You can use that in some instances for applique as well. Um so there's a lot of things that you can do. Heather, have a good night. Thank you for joining us this evening. I appreciate that. Uh, have a, let's see, really enjoyed and learned a lot. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, ESD Embroidery Online has some great adult appliques. That's good to know. Thank you. You need a tool to special specifically squeeze them? Yes. Seems like paper towels are starting to become another hard item to find again, folks. Yes, they are. A lot of this is starting to become hard to find again, a lot of things, unfortunately. So um, I try to stock up on some stuff without like losing my mind and going crazy and then definitely checking out, um, not checking out, but definitely cutting back on how much I'm using. My girlfriend has been wanting over a month for the 7710 she ordered online from Office Depot. So that could be possible. Candy bowls. We did candy bowls um last year. So unless it's a new type of design, um, you know, the kind where it folds up and it's got the corners or what have you. Um, because Will, we did candy candy bowls. Um, with a video, if I'm remembering. I don't think it was last year. I think it was the year before that we did candy bowls. But the candy holders is a new thing I hadn't really seen. But I'm just, I don't know, you guys. I, I like to find the newer and latest and greatest type designs and stuff that are really fun to um, do that you haven't seen before type situation. Those are my favorite things to do. And every blue moon, somebody comes out with something you like, oh, that is phenomenal and then you know it blows up started stocking up two weeks ago yeah no no and i i don't even i even kind of stopped 
super stocking because I don't want to take too much from other folks. You can do sublimation with the Cricut Joy. Limited, of course. But since I am limited on room and time, I'm happy about this. Um, Are you talking about with the Cricut... You saying sublimation with the infusible ink with the Cricut Joy? If so, yes, that makes sense. But it's smaller. I don't know. How big is that thing? Because I haven't even... I saw it briefly, looked at it briefly, and then just didn't uh, really go into it too much. Landscape applique is really cool. Okay. Miss Stampin' Sue, we'll check that out. And I also try to find projects that are affordable as well. So like $20 project, that's going to be a no for me unless this is like super phenomenal um, because there are so many people on so many different levels and I try to find projects that the 4x4 crew can jump in on as well or at least the 5x7s. So if it's anything above that, I, I try not to push that too hard because I want more people to have fun and do the project as well. So, yeah. Um, I've learned so much as well tonight. I've been practicing made one onesie so far and hope to post pictures in the online forum. Have a wonderful night. You have a good night too, Miss Pressure. Thank you for joining us. They had them at our local BJ's and only one. Oh, y'all still talking about the paper towels. Yeah, I don't really use paper towels super a whole lot, but I just thought of something. I just thought of a project. We're going to have to do. Let me text it myself. And tell you what it is. Because somebody is going to jump in front of me and be like, ooh, we done do this. No. Oh. Yas. Okay. So at any rate, a little slow tonight. You guys, um, a lot of bell ringing. It was a lot of fun because we got about 15 minutes. Will we be able to see the live chat? Yes. I've missed bits and pieces and need some of the info. Yes, Leslie, we sure will. And thank you, Leslie, for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate that. Um, I always keep the lives um, and, and post them because uh, it's beneficial to more than just me. And... It, we do share a lot of tips and stuff in our lives that I want to be sure uh, that everybody has access to. So, yes, we do keep it um, up so that everybody can see it. So, and I also keep the chat showing, the, the chat shows up down there as well anyways. So, yes. But at any rate. So I've enjoyed you guys. We got about 15 minutes. So if you have any last second questions, just go ahead and drop them in the chat. Um, but I want to let you guys know that the classes we had, so what pro beginners classes, they were phenomenal. We had a really good time. We will be having more classes coming down the pipes uh, for advanced. So what pro classes and showing folks how to, uh, we discussed arching text and, uh, or arcing text, however you want to say it, as well as editing, detail editing, removing stitches, erasing parts of designs and merging parts of designs and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to um, touch on in our next set of classes. So if you've missed the So What Pro beginners class, I'll post when the next one is going to be. Um, because it, it went very well and didn't know that you guys really needed it like that. So we're going to do the advanced class too, um, and get you guys up to speed on that. Harmony Ling, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, if it's embroidering on paper towels, I've done that as well as the embroidered bars. So hilarious. No, it's not. <laughs> Embroidering on toilet paper rolls is fun. It would be a good project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done the toilet paper. Uh, you're welcome, Stampus Who Creates. Hey, do you have the expanders for your hoop master? Yes, I do. Andrea Michelle, I surely do. I think uh, you, you're talking about what I have. I'll show it here in a sec. I know that I'm not very vocal, but thank you for being such an inspiration for all of us. Thank you. So, so on. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I really definitely 
appreciate the encouragement. It is well received. Um, I'd be interested in how to erase mistakes. Oh, that's easy to do. Embroidered on fleece. Yes, you do need salvi for fleece. Well, you don't need salvi. It depends on what the embroidery design is. If you have like a nice wide uh, satin column font, then you won't need um, necessarily salvi. But if you're doing like something with some thin and little details to it and not too much around those details, then yes, you will need to use the salvi, water salvi on top. You're welcome and good night to you, Miss Iris Diaz. And Minky Fleece, yes, I do use water soluble on that as well. We're live on the phone and have your beanie video paused on the computer. <laughs> You'll be getting tight and winter is coming. Yes, I love doing the beanies. The beanies are fun because they're they're kind of simple to do. Find a nice thick font and it'll turn out really good. It'll turn out really good. Oh, Oh, you're welcome, Patty Shelton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night, Betty Stetcher. Oh, let's see. Now, Andrea Michelle, you asked about the expanders. I think this is what you're talking about. Oh, let me grab my. Okay, so here is the Hoop Master. Let me make sure. Okay, here's the hoop master right here. And the hoop master, normally it doesn't have these brackets. Is this what you're talking about? Because here's the bracket where I can do my bigger hoops. So I just move this, lock it in place, and use this for um, the large size hoops. Is this what you're talking about? Yes, I do have these. And these are a major lifesaver, major game changer with the Hoop Master. Major game changer. Because otherwise, I would still be struggling with my large, mighty hoops and getting um, things hooped properly. So, yeah, that thing is total awesome sauce. It really, really is. I absolutely love it. Just curious if it's my next purchase. Want to know if it's one? Yes, ma'am. Very worth it. Very, very, very worth it. Thank you for always being a blessing. Always enjoy these chats in Durham. Getting ready to go back to DC. Have a wonderful week. Have safe travels back to DC, please. And I'm um, glad you're hanging out in Durham. Hopefully, everything went well for you there. Miss Social Dev, the So What Pro class was great. It made so much more sense and it just clicked after the class. So thank you. Awesome sauce. Yes. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> I would really like to see how you keep up with your orders and where they are in the process. Oh, Andrea and Michelle. Yeah. So about keeping up with the orders and where they are in the process. A lot of times, um, what I ha am having to do used to be, I would just rely on this up here, but this is starting to fail me quite a bit. So I have a white board where you remember in my old studio, I had a big glass board. I would put my orders up there and chalk on the glass. Um, but I don't have the space for that in here. So I just put up a small white board over here on the side. And what I do is, um, what I've done is I write the orders and stuff over there so that I know what's coming up and what I need to do. Um, and that's how I keep up right now <laughs> with my orders. But there is, like, for instance, Alexis in the So Sweet monogramming, she has a journal type book where you can write out your orders and stuff that you have coming up, that's an option as well. Um, but usually when I'm in the middle of getting orders together or put it like, for instance, I do have an order for jackets. I haven't started them yet. So what I try to do is when I start an order, I try to start it and get it done because I don't like to stop in the middle because when I'm in my routine and in my flow, I like to keep it going and get it over and done with. I don't care if it takes late into the night um 
so that I don't miss something. That's one of the things I've tried to always do. But it's kind of archaic. Just write it up on the board and then when I'm done, wipe it off. I wish it was more exciting than that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, we'll see about trying to find something a little more exciting and uh, try some new stuff. That would be fun. Try some new stuff and uh, let you guys know how that goes and see if we can come up with a better process. Because there are some online options that I have started to, I had started to try where you can keep up with orders online and it even sends out notifications and stuff. But you have to remember to go online and put in your orders. Otherwise, it does no good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where we are. Um, exactly. Where can you purchase the Hoopmaster? Wanisha, you can go to Hoopmaster, I believe, dot com. They are phenomenal. I love my Hoopmaster. Hoopmaster.com is where you can go. And you're buying directly from the source. And they are really awesome there. And uh, let them know you found out from the baby's booty. Um, Let's see. Have a good night, Miss Ethel Smith. I use the price list as my wish list. I ain't mad. I understand. Are there any types of fabrics that you wouldn't recommend people use on their single needle machines? Um, honestly, no. Um, because you can do denim, you can do leather, you can do now not thick leather, but like the thinner leather. Um, you can do so maybe thick leather, I would say no. You can do silk satin you just have to know what type designs to put on what type fabric and what stabilizer to use with what type fabric um so my thing is the more delicate the fabric you want to use your cutaway stabilizer your 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 stabilizer needs to support your stitches so you can use a lightweight cutaway on the back of like some satin but if you're doing like your leather you really don't have to have a stabilizer um, like for instance my duffel bags that I do for the cheer team I don't use stabilizer on those um, I just hoop it because it's not gonna flex too much and move around too much so um, it just depends on what you're doing but there aren't really any fabrics I would say no to is the hoop master only for clothing I'm making little bags from scratch and I need to center my design when hooping the magnetic hoop um no it's not only for clothing but for the bag, you're saying a little bag, you could use, because see, the hoop master is big, and that's for your larger items. They do have a smaller hoop master, like a little teeny one that can help you line up stuff that you can use. Um, Andre and Michelle have a large white boy, I forget it still. Yeah, same, same. But now I have a um, husband that, stays on me about putting stuff up on the board so that's helped as well so maybe get a little buzz in your ear to help you remember to do stuff but back to um what she said where is it when hooping T trisha so it's not only for clothing because they also show you can hoop towels and blankets and stuff like that so no it's not just for uh clothing but the smaller one for a smaller bag may be your better option than the larger one. Um, and it can help with that as well. You hit grommets with a hammer. I have, I, I've seen the grommet maker, so I wouldn't have even thought to hit a grommet with a hammer when they got the big grommet thingy with the handle. So, you know, I would do that. Um, but if that works, then that works. Um, okay, that's your biggest issue is maintaining orders, then we'll have to investigate that and find us something you're welcome Wanisha thanks for being a relatable down to earth helper importer educator I appreciate you thank you Latasha <laughs> I'm just being me and teaching you what you know you guys are asking for for the most part um not knocking anything or whatever but i know how it is to be frustrated when you're trying to work on a project and get projects done and things are going wrong um or you 
know there has to be a better way to do something out there and can't figure out how to do it. Um, so being the case, I've taken my frustrations and my issues and I'm like, look, let's help you guys out and help you have happy embroidering, which is where the happy embroidering um, saying came from because you don't want miserable embroidering or sad embroidering. <laughs> There's been more than enough tears in my studio. Um, so we try and work through this and I want to show the mistakes that I've made so that it will help you avoid mistakes. So that's the point of it. But I definitely appreciate you pointing that out, Miss Lotaka. I definitely do. Yes, ma'am. I bought some blank thin leather teardrop earrings. Can I border on something that small? Ooh, um, you can, but you will need, probably need sticky stabilizer to hold it in the hoop and you'll have to line it up and figure how to line it up. So it may be better to get the leather and make your own because there are teardrop embroidery patterns out there to make teardrop earrings. We've actually done a few here. Well, other shapes, but teardrop is out there. Alrighty, there's a Hoop Master group on Facebook called Mighty Hoop. Let's Hoop Together. Kathy Hogg runs it. She can help you save on shipping. Cool, if you go through her. Also, she has tons of hooping videos. The Rivet Press. Yes, Rivet Press. That is correct. The one with the handle. Yeah, they got different colors, different sizes, big, small. Matter of fact, I intend to get one. Just haven't gotten that yet. So... All right, you guys. Well, it is 11 p.m. and I enjoyed it this evening. It was just laid back, chill out type show. Um, but I appreciate you taking the time to join us for our little chit chat session this evening and love ringing the bell for all the different babies that we've had pop up and new members. So and upgrading members. So thank you so much for taking your time to join us here this evening. Um, if you haven't already, please join us on Facebook, uh, the Hoop Group, and you're welcome to post pictures of your um, embroidery projects. Just read the posts on the rules and regulations and come on in and let's have a really good time. You can also get great help there. There's a lot of helpful folks in the Hoop Group in addition to myself. So we have a lot of wisdom and, and um, age in there that have been doing embroidery a very long time. So don't feel afraid to ask questions. So until the next time we see you guys next week, we'll have us a topic and a project to work on. We got a couple of projects now, but we'll have us a project. And I think applique was the one folks wanted the most. So we'll find us some applique to do next week. And I look forward to seeing you then. So until the next time we see you, we hope you have happy embroidering. You guys have a great night and we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.